Since the Red Devils hired Ruben Amarim from Sporting after dismissing Eric Ten Hag, they have been repeatedly linked to Jokeresh, who Amarim has worked with at Sporting. United, of course, have Rasmus Hoyland and Joshua Zerksey, who were both highly rated forwards before they signed for United. Hoyland powered his country's Denmark qualification for the Euro 2024, scoring seven goals in eight matches, including a crazy hat-trick against Finland. He then scored 10 goals and had two assists for United in the 23-24 season. That same season, Joshua Zerksey scored 11 goals and created five goals in 34 appearances for Bologna and helped them qualify for their first Champions League in 60 years and also their best finish in Serie A since 1971. So, since United have these guys, why do they need Victor Jokeresh? Well, Manchester United have a striker problem. For a while, they've had terrible luck when it comes to strikers. They went from a team that boasted of lethal goal scorers like Ruud van Nisseroy, Wayne Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo and Robin van Persie to a team that scored five goals after five games. United's goal-scoring problems didn't just start now. They've been a long time coming before reaching the sad conclusion that it currently is at the moment. Now, don't get me wrong, the lack of goals United have scored is not all down to the strikers, but at a great club like Manchester United, the striker needs to be world-class. At some point, they were signing forwards that were past their prime. They signed Radamel Falcao in 2014, Zlatan Ibrahimovic in 2016, Edinson Cavani in 2020, and then Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, in 2021. And then they also signed attackers that were too young for the weight of pressure and expectations that were placed on them. Their treasured signing, Anthony Martial, who they signed when he was 20, just couldn't find that consistency that was needed for a team like Manchester United to compete. Marcus Rashford, the other high-profile youngster in the team, did step up as a goal threat for United when he debuted for the team, and then, poof, he lost all steam and has been struggling since, despite a couple of great seasons. He has had a few recent bright starts, but scoring 13 times in his past 60 appearances? Well, that's not impressive at all, is it? He has even only scored more than 10 goals in just four seasons out of the eight he's been with the club. Like Rashford, Romelu Lukaku, who United signed for £75 million in July 2017 when he was 24 from Everton, was considered a disappointment. However, he performed better than all of United's signings for the forward position since 2017. Despite not being warmly accepted by fans, Lukaku scored 42 goals in 96 games. But unfortunately, he too failed to break the barrier of 20 league goals a season. This has proved to be a trend for every United striker in the post-Ferguson era. United shipped Lukaku to Inter Milan unceremoniously, but things didn't get better for them when it came to forwards. So... After their big names and big money signings, United changed their strategy. And what they arrived at was pretty weird. They made a couple of signings that would have been spectacular if they'd have worked out. They signed Igalo and Veghorst on loan, but those two didn't do enough for them to continue to play for the Red Devils. And again, these are not big names with stature that excite the fans. As United struggled for a consistent goal scorer, the signing of Bruno Fernandes changed a lot for the team. He soon became a hero for United with his goals and assists, but even he began to get overwhelmed by the burden of being United's outlet for pretty much everything. Still, he did manage to score 10 goals for them, same as their big money signing Rasmus Hoyland in the 23-24 season. So United needed Hoyland to have competition up front and also improve their goal scoring. They also chose to back Eric Ten Hag and began to sign for him players that fit the kind of profile he had in his iconic Ajax team. So United arrived at the signing of Joshua Zerksey, a striker who doesn't like to be called a number 10 but rather a nine and a half. Zerksey scored 11 goals and created five goals in 34 appearances. For Bologna, 
it would be the first season he would truly lead the line for Bologna, as he had to play second fiddle to Marko Arnautovic in the 22-23 season and only scored two goals and made two assists. Unfortunately, at United he has been lost. He's only scored once and assisted once in 11 games. There are even reports that he wants a return to Serie A in the winter transfer window to gain form. And since the sacking of Ten Hag, there have been reports that the former manager didn't want to sign Xerxes and that he turned up overweight. Now you see what I mean by United having a striker problem. They need a striker and who better than Viktor Jokeresh, the man their new coach Ruben Amarim is already used to and the man probably the most informed striker in Europe right now. This guy, as of the time of this recording, has more goals than Harry Kane and Kylian Mbappe since the start of the 23-24 season. Jokeresh has provided 11 assists and created 74 chances in 43 league matches for Sporting since he joined them in the 23-24 season. He has come a long way from being the man that renowned talent scouts Brighton rejected to the now tormentor of defences. Jokeresh is the combination of both Hoyland and Xerxes. Now, wait, let me add some context. I've talked about Xerxes' style earlier, but he also has Hoyland's strengths in his ability to hold up play and use his strength to bully defenders. He can also run in behind and has a breathtaking ball-striking ability. Now, Now that you have an idea of how Xerxes and Hoyland play, let me tell you why Jokeresh is a combination of both and why his signing makes sense for United and why they should splash the money on him. Jokeresh is strong, Haaland-level strong. He uses his strength to terrorise defenders and keep the ball in an incredible display of hold-up play, and he does this better than Hoyland. Jokeresh uses this hold-up play to create chances by laying passes off to other players in the team. Like Xerxes, he brings other players into the game. Also, Jokeresh is great to watch in 1v1 situations. He's a man for those tight pockets of space on the pitch. Jokeresh can play well in those tight spaces by taking controlled small touches on the ball, changing direction, and he leaves defenders eating the grass. And the pace on Jokeresh is just crazy. For a tall striker, he can move and make constant runs at and behind defenders to score. At Sporting, Jokeresh running at and in behind has become a regular frightening occurrence. Opponents have tried to limit this part of his game. And so he went on to master his pace and learnt to avoid the offside trap by bending his run so he could exploit the space outside of the opposition's central defenders. This guy is the real deal. Jokeresh has an incredible poacher's instinct with his awareness in the opposition box and how he times his movements so that he can get at the end of balls and smash them into the net or even create chances for his teammates. Jokeresh doesn't have to be in the box to deal damage though, especially since he likes to move across the front three. He is the complete package, the bane of defenders, and what makes him even more frightening is his ability to not stop running. Jokeresh is hard-working and will continue to press defenders and force mistakes from them. His style makes him suited to a side that plays both possession and counter-attacking football. He often plays on the left wing over the course of his career and nowadays still drifts over there to create a different opportunity for himself. Hopefully, United under Ruben Amarim won't be as they were under Ten Hag. Amarin plays a 3-4-3, which could shape up to be a 3-4-2-1, with two forwards playing behind the striker. The core of the formation is possession, but he can also go direct too. When Jokeresh joined Sporting, Amarim tweaked his system so that Sporting could play direct. Amarim stretches his play using wingbacks, and he encourages chemistry between his wingbacks and Jokeresh. So, when the opportunity arises, the wingbacks immediately thread through balls forward and count on Jokeresh to use his devastating pace to get on the ball and bury chances into the back of the net. And don't forget, 
the build-up play from United should be excellent in the coming months. With the amount of money they've spent on ball-playing defenders and even goalkeepers, and with Lenny Yoro back in the squad, they really have no excuses. Click here for how Yoro can transform the squad now he's returned from injury. United have two players who are suited to the wing-back role. They've got Nusa Mazraoui and Diogo Dallo. The potential for both of them potentially forming a relationship with Jokeres is something that's exciting to think about as they're pretty decent going forwards and good on the ball despite that horrible miss a couple of weeks ago. Another player who could form a lethal partnership with Jokeres is of course Bruno Fernandes. In Amarim's system, while the wingbacks keep the width, the other three forward players stay close to each other. And so Sporting can have more presence around opposition areas and also provide more bodies in the middle of the pitch to make them difficult to play through. Having Bruno Fernandes close to Jokeres is something the Premier League should be scared of. The two of them could be devastating, especially as they both can score and create. Fernandes can occupy spaces that Victor vacates or provide goal-scoring chances for the striker. For a comparative video on Victor and another world-class Scandinavian striker, Erling Haaland, click here and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy. Earlier, we spoke about United's misfortune with their attackers. But nowadays, they finally have some potential. Ahmad Diallo and Alejandro Garnacho are showing some fine potential on the wings and are playing direct football with confidence, which is what fans love to see. Even Marcus Rashford, who's found some glimpses of form, is decent when cutting inside to score or provide goal-scoring chances, and he could come alive alongside Jokeres. Not only will they play close to him, they'll also benefit from his ability to create chances. Rashford could especially regain his form, since he wouldn't have to start from wide and would play a hybrid position of winger and attacking midfielder. Even Xerxes and Hoyland would be better with Jokeres in the team. Xerxes, the self-appointed 9.5, could play alongside Jokeres. As I told you before, Xerxes can also create chances. So if Amrim wants to be more attacking, he could use Xerxes as one of the two forwards behind Jokeres. Xerxes in that position would be free from the burden of being the primary goalscorer and be able to be as involved in the play as much as possible. Xerxes is excellent in those pockets of space too, and he could be, to United, what Müller in his younger days was to Bayern. He could make it possible for Jokeres to stay central and make sure that opposition centre-backs are troubled for the whole of the game. But that's just one way they could play. Jokeres and Xerxes could also have a partnership that involves positional fluidity, where one player occupies the space left by the other. And for Hoyland, having a striker like Jokeres to understudy would make him even better. Now, while things aren't certain yet about Jokeres moving to United, one thing is for sure, Jokeres can transform them into a super team immediately. According to reports, he may not even cost as much as 100 million euros and could go for around 65 to 70 million euros. Jokeres is surely the man to help Amarim and his new coaching staff get the best out of all their players. United are nearly there, but with Jokeres, they'll be even closer and they will be brutal. Do you think United should do anything to sign him?